Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at ferrofluid, which if you've not seen it before is a really interesting uh, little science experiment, uh, but it's also a really interesting photography subject uh, that we can get nicer and close into uh, with our macro lens. So stick around and uh, we'll get started. fluid then. Uh, it's a really interesting little science experiment that people like to try out because of its interesting properties. Uh, for those of you that don't know, ferrofluid is a magnetic liquid. Uh, so uh, it was invented by NASA uh, in order to uh, move fuel around inside rockets in zero G. It was a pretty ingenious solution if you ask me, um, but it's something that you guys can get hold of really easily. Uh, you can just buy it on the internet, um, get a magnet, and start playing around. I've got uh, a couple of little vials here um, and I've got a pretty uh, badass magnet here. This is a neodymium magnet uh, with about 45 kilo pull weight. So if I were to magnetize this to some metal, it would take 45 kilos worth of strength to uh, pull it off again. Uh, so it's a really strong magnet. Um, if you go out and get one of these, uh, there'll be lots of warning signs on the packaging, but uh, don't go playing with really strong magnets if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so I'm going to pop uh, some of my ferrofluid down into a little tray uh, and get started taking a look through the camera at what we can do with this really interesting little subject. I'm going to be shooting both freehand and with the camera on a tripod. I'm thinking that we're going to need to get close enough uh, to see uh, these little spikes that will be created uh, that will need to have some sort of stabilization on the camera. Um, our lighting, I've got uh, various lighting arms, different colours, whites, greens, uh, blue, red and amber. Um, and I've also got some, uh, some colour filters as well, so we'll be trying those out at the same time. Um, our ferrofluid though, that's, that's the interesting part and it's also the challenge uh, with this shoot. It's incredibly messy. It's uh, really horrible black stuff. Uh, you'll see that I've already uh, got some to uh, to tidy up on it uh, with my with my paper towels and things. Um, it comes in these little vials. Uh, at least the stuff that I did, I didn't get very much, so a couple of these uh, was enough for me. Uh, but I've just popped it into this uh, little glass bottle here, uh, just to have a go with um, my magnet and my ferrofluid because. If, you, uh, if you're not sure what this stuff does uh, and you just bring magnets in close to it, it's going to uh, surprise you. I, I guarantee it will surprise you. It's, it's very, very magnetic. So you see there that this magnet is already pulling uh, and it's just on the side there. Uh, so the fluid is actually coming with the magnet all the way up to the top there. And you'll see that it's, it's actually staining the inside of the bottle as it does move. Um, so you can imagine what this is going to do to your uh, skin, to your clothes, uh, to the carpet, to your table. Um, make sure to try and keep it contained. I'm going to be shooting in uh, a little uh, petri dish here, um, which I think will be uh, pretty much perfect for uh, getting nice and low down, uh, sort of shooting across uh, while keeping the ferrofluid relatively contained. The one thing that I am going to be doing is keeping our magnet uh, completely separate from the ferrofluid altogether. So I'm going to be shooting uh, with the magnet underneath this glass uh, of the coffee table. So my petri dish and ferrofluid will be on the top here and then the magnet I'm going to bring in underneath so that that magnetism can still come through the table and affect the fluid but without the fluid uh, sort of jumping out and going all over the magnet. If you get uh, the ferrofluid on your magnet, it's going to be a pain to try and get it off. Uh, I would argue uh, nigh on impossible to get your magnet clean again. Um, I'm going to start sort of uh, pipetting some, some ferrofluid into my magnetized uh, petri dish uh, and let's have a look exactly what uh, is going to happen when I do that. My magnet is down underneath the table now. I've got uh, a few books stacked up to keep that magnet at a decent distance away from uh, the glass underneath it, uh, just so that we can put a few initial drops 
uh, of the ferrofluid into our petri dish, which is what I'm going to do now. Uh, the, this camera is rolling, so we should uh, be able to see uh, pretty easily what these first few drops are actually going to do. Uh, just as I place them into the dish there, uh, you can see that as I do drop these in here, uh, they form into spikes which is exactly what we're looking for from this ferrofluid. Uh, that's the, the interesting property of, of the ferrofluid. You'll actually see that it's, it's dripping it in from a different angle as well, just to make sure that it's, it's right in the middle of our magnet's um, magnetic field. And that's only a few drops of this stuff. Uh, if I go ahead and add in the rest of it, uh, we can get some even more interesting uh, features going on in our petri dish. So I've now got a uh, full petri dish. Um, uh, I've actually taken the magnet away from underneath. Uh, it's not sat on those books anymore. Um, simply so that I can have a little bit more control over uh, over where um, that magnet is sat. Because I have a feeling with this much ferrofluid, it's actually going to want to magnetize to the bottom of uh, our um, our table. So I'm just going to bring this in underneath here and we'll have a look at, uh, at what this actually does to our ferrofluid as we bring it in underneath uh, the table. And you'll see that it's actually making some really big spikes. I know quite far away here, um, but as we bring it closer and closer and closer, the spikes get smaller uh, and more numerous until yeah, I can feel it pulling on, on the bottom of the table here. So if I just let go there, it will actually... Yeah, that's magnetized to the bottom of the table. Um, and you can see that it's actually holding all of that ferrofluid in, in the radius of the magnets, pulling it in from uh, the rest of the petri dish, which is, is really quite cool. Um, but as I move that magnet round, that ferrofluid will follow, uh, follow the magnet um, and stay in the rest of the, the petri dish. Uh, so this is this is quite interesting. Um, the closer the magnet is, the smaller those spikes are going to be, which we can make use of uh, to get the right size spikes for our pictures. So uh, I've got my uh, my Adaptilux control pod here mounted on a mini stabilizer. Uh, now this is a, a blue control pod. This is my personal one. Uh, it's limited edition, so you can't get these blue ones anymore. Um, but the black ones, uh, they're exactly the same, uh, it's just that this one's blue. Uh, so I've also got a, uh, a white lighting arm. Um, now before we plug this in or bring it anywhere near our ferrofluid, uh, we're going to need to take off the, uh, the beam angle adjuster on the front because it's got a big magnet on it that holds uh, the diffusers on. So I'm just going to unscrew that. Uh, because if you were to bring this too close to your ferrofluid and it magnetized to it, uh, yeah, you're not going to have a good time. You're going to have ferrofluid all over the end of your lighting up. So just be aware of that. Uh, as I plug this in, uh, you'll be able to see what a massive difference that actually makes to our image. Uh, bringing in the light from one side is really interesting. Bringing it in from the top can do different things as well, making a little spotlight in the middle. You'll actually see that uh, the highlights on here are really quite bright. Um, and we're going to have a lot of contrast between the, the super dark black material and the, the really light reflections on there. Uh, something that you might want to do is, is keep that beam angle controller on there and just be very, very careful that it's, uh, it's screwed all the way on so it doesn't drop off onto your ferrofluid and also that it's far enough away that it's not going to uh, uh, magnetize to the fluid. Uh, and then you can use a diffuser on there and that will give us a, a very different look to our ferrofluid uh, where it's not quite as many uh, little individual highlights uh, but it's more um, streaks of light going up the edges of those spikes. So if I were to grab our magnet and move this around you can see that those spikes actually move with the magnet, so I can use the magnet to go exploring in my subject, uh, which is really quite cool. Uh, you do need to make sure that uh, you're not overflowing your, your petri dish as you're looking through the back of your camera, that would be uh, very messy, 
but generally the uh, the ferrofluid is going to stay pretty close to your magnet uh, because it's magnetized in there. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, change this light uh, just into a different port so I can bring it around this back side and then I'm going to see about bringing it in uh, maybe yeah let's do a red light and see what that looks like uh, and I'm bringing in this red LED in from this left hand side uh, and you'll see there that that's made some really nice little uh, catch lights in the back of the ferrofluid and as I move that around uh, those catch lights will actually move around with it as well and that will stay uh, in generally the same pattern. If I were to then diffuse that red as well you'll see that we're getting uh, red streaks up the other side of the spikes moving our lighting around to a different angle will change where those highlights are actually sat uh, changing to uh, say a red diffuser will change them again it's time to experiment <laughs> I'm going to uh, get stuck in changing all of our lights around and see what I can get with these tiny little spikes and then if I were to uh, move my magnet away a little bit it's going to change the size of those spikes as well so that will be really interesting to play with at the same time. This ferrofluid is probably one of the most interesting subjects that I've ever shot. It's also one of the most challenging macro photography subjects that I've ever come up against. Uh, because it's so dark and reflective, uh, so messy and fluid and hard to manage, uh, it makes it all uh, a bit of a challenge uh, getting it all together and getting some interesting shots. Uh, I think I've got some really cool um, sort of abstract looking shots with the different colours though, uh, so I'm pretty happy with today's shoot. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think to, uh, to the images today um, and how I've set up this uh, ferrofluid uh, shot. I'm not a scientist, so uh, there's probably uh, a few things that I could have done better. Uh, but let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you like the video, give us a like whilst you're down there. And make sure to uh, subscribe if you're enjoying these macro photography uh, tutorials, inspiration uh, and subject ideas that we're coming out with. Uh, there's a lot more to come in the future. Uh, until then though guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.